Um, okay, uh, I will pop my video back on. Uh, hello. Um, so we have one question in the Q&A section at the moment. Uh, we have in response to me, uh, how long did it take to develop? Um, that's often a tricky question uh, because it was it was built by me over a long time. Uh, so initially we did have internal viewers and presentation systems that didn't use IIIF. It was before sort of IIIF um, was, was more prevalent, but we just moved to IIIF to uh, avoid the double-decker bus problem as I was the only person who actually um, knew how to build it all. So we want to move to more standard systems to make it easier for other people to use um, and uh, uh, to support in general. Um, so it's tricky to answer. Um, as actual sort of sitting down doing nothing else, um, probably months. Uh, in reality, it was done in little bits over a longer period of time. Um, that's also because there's lots of associated tools for say automatic or semi-automatic renaming of file images and, and all sorts of other things that had to be developed along with it, um, which, which makes it a little trickier. Uh, right, we have a question from Kathleen about exhibit. Uh, Andrew, are you able to answer that one? Is there any data on how many people are using Exhibit, including creating their own exhibits? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, we, uh, because uh, I forgot to say about Exhibit actually, is that it was uh, funded by the Esme Fairbound Foundation uh, as a project uh, specifically for uh, online uh, teaching for this. So we do have to gather stats. I think we're over 700 exhibits have been created uh, since we're live in about August time. Uh, maybe about 200 of those are test, test one, test one, two, three, test one, two, three, four, four, five. So, uh, but probably, yeah, uh, there's 700 registered uh, exhibits and we do have uh, we do have some uh, internal data at the moment about where they've all, uh, all been used for, but uh, one of the things we are looking at in the future is actually uh, making statistics available to the person who's created the exhibit as well. So when they go into their exhibit to edit it, you can see how many people have, have viewed it and maybe from where and, and all of that uh, as, a, as a future development. All right, thank you, Andrew. Um, the next question is from Alex, uh, Alex Bromley. Um, I can start to answer this question, but uh, very happy for other people to jump in. Uh, uh, in. My organization wants to implement IIIF and has collection management systems and linked images on a local server. Where do I start? Um, I think a lot of that depends on what sort of skill sets you have in house um, and whether you would immediately need to talk to um, some digital agency or a vendor to help you do the work. Um, I personally quite like having an isolated uh, Linux server and just install a IIIF uh, server and start to explore and see what you can do. Um, there's a lot of uh, use cases and examples in the IIIF community. There's a great list called IIIF Awesome, which gives you examples of many things that have been built with IIIF. Um, there's also a IIIF cookbook or many IIIF cookbooks that are describing how solutions for small aspects of this problem. Um, but I would say that the first thing you probably want to do is to look at how you're going to get the data together. So if you look at your collections management system to say, how am I going to pull out my collections uh, information? Um, what jobs need to be done to then relate the collections information to the image information? And do you have enough information in your databases or your file names to actually do all of that correlation? Or is some actually manual data cleaning needed? Uh, the next point is to sort of pick uh, your scripting language of choice, depending on your skill set or the skill set of the um, uh, agency you, you contact, to uh, look at trying to uh, parse all of that data together to produce you a clean database that you can then use or middleware solution to use to present um, or create manifests from and search engines from and, and presentations. Uh, from there, there's lots of IIIF solutions for you to select what type of viewer you might want. Uh, do you want to just present images? Do you want some kind of um, forms or database data entry with it? Uh, so it's step by step. So the first one is look at your data. How do you get your data out? And what are your solutions for aggregating it together? Um, there are a number of standards you could potentially look at if you want to uh, be more complex about semantic connections among the data. But simple is probably best to begin with. Um, and if you can get your data out, you can then look at more work to do that. Once you have an idea of if a lot of work's needed, then you might look at collaborations to explore ways of doing that. 
Um, but yeah, start with your data first and then move on to uh, the IIIF community and ask questions there about particular solutions and the IIIF awesome list, which Tom's dropped in and the uh, cookbooks, uh, which are extremely useful to find solutions. And if you don't have a solution of cookbook, you can always suggest on the Slack channel that a cookbook is required to answer my particular question um, and, and see who can help you out. Would anyone else in the panel like to add to that? Uh, I, I could briefly maybe add to that, uh, Joe. Uh, we, we always sure. implemented our IIIF stack probably last January or February. And the one thing I'll say, and probably reiterate what you said, it, it's quite hard. Uh, I was like, I worked in IT for 20 years and uh, it was uh, to get over that first stumbling block of, of getting it working uh, is, is quite difficult. Uh, but once you're there, uh, it's, it's really rewarding. And I think uh, the other thing is, is, is the infrastructure you need in the background as well. Uh, if for running an infra, a triple IF infrastructure uh, publicly, but I think that's maybe where you, Joe, and your project maybe comes in, uh, which you'll hear about later on, I think, hopefully. Yes, as, as I mentioned, that uh, the second webinar in this series is hopefully looking at the services and systems required to do this and whether what, which ones exist already and which ones might need to be developed um, and, and who might be able to provide these solutions and services. So I think that may well be a good webinar for you to come to, to look at setting up your system in the first place. Um, I, I hope that answers. Um, so Paul has asked, can you give us the public URL again? Uh, can you add which public URL you're wanting? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Is that for exhibit.so uh, or the data one or? I'm not sure. If you could drop it into the chat, perhaps, uh, Paula, that might be good. Not data. OK. Yes, that's the, I uh, will drop it in the chat. interesting what web URLs you just remember off the top of your head and which ones you need to look up. Um, but yeah, that's the, the beta endpoint for doing for National Gallery information. Okay, so we're now five minutes past, almost four or five minutes past five. Um, if there are not any other burning questions, I think it probably would be good to break for 15 minutes. Uh, to allow people to uh, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Um, and we will resume at uh, 20 past five uh, for the next session with some really good talks about um, our project. Um, thank you very much for everyone. And we'll be back in 15 minutes. Thank you.